Hello, and welcome to 13.4 Electricity Generation. So, so far we've learned that we can get electricity by moving a magnet around. We know what direction the electricity will go, and we also know about the type of electricity that we're going to get, which is this alternating current. So now the next step is, let's do it, let's get some electricity. We want to be able to get a reliable device that we can get electricity out of by putting in some manual labor, putting in some physical movement. And this, again, this is the start of the electrical age. This is such an important development. All of our electricity nowadays is built on these basic ideas. So, here we go. The AC generator. Let's generate some electricity. Our design, the simple design that we have down below, looks a lot like a split ring commutator. Now, if you don't remember that one, that was from chapter 12. Basically, that's our very, very basic motor. But instead, we turn the circuit we turn it externally. We give it some sort of external force. And then we can measure the resulting current. So it's almost exactly like a split ring commutator, except with the commutator, or, or with a motor, we run electricity through it, and we get motion. Here, we give it motion, and we get electricity out, which is awesome. It's the exact opposite. So take a look at the picture down here. If we take this loop of wires, the first thing you need to understand is if this thing isn't moving at all, there's no electricity. We've got a north pole, we've got a south pole, we've got some wires, nothing's happening. Okay? That's very, very important to understand. There's no electricity running through this thing until we start moving it. As we start moving it, we're going to rotate it like this, we start getting electricity. Now we can use Lenz's law to figure out what direction our electricity is going to go. Remember, Lenz's law says that we're going to produce a magnetic field that opposes the change in magnetic field that the wires are experiencing. Basically, we're gonna, the, the magnetic field is going to try to slow things down. It's going to steal some of the kinetic energy and turn it into electricity. So let's see what's going on here. If I'm turning this this way, well, I've got a loop of wires. It could have a current running like this, which would give it, if you use your right hand rule, it would give a, a north pole pointing sort of downwards on an angle like this. You've got to think in three dimensions with this, but it'd be pointing down on an angle like that. Or the current could be pointing in the other direction, where it goes like this. And, right hand rule, that gives us a north pole going up like this. Those are our only two options. If I had it looking like this, with the north pole pointing up like this, and I'm turning everything like this, you can see that I'm turning the north pole towards the south pole. And that should sound like a problem to you, because the north pole wants to go towards the south pole. So if, if our electric field is producing a north pole like this, it would be helping it move. It would actually be accelerating things. So that means, no, this is wrong. This is wrong. Instead, our wires are going to produce a north pole pointing down like this, and the north pole is being pushed in this direction towards this north pole. And that is what's going to slow the circuit down. That's what's going to steal some kinetic energy. That's what's going to give us electricity. So one more time here. If I'm turning this thing this way, I want, with my electric circuit, I want to be slowing that down. To slow it down, I can put a north pole down here, because that north pole is getting closer and closer to the other north pole, so it's, it wants to push away from that north pole. It's going to be slowed down. And there we go. That tells us what direction our current is going to be. We use our right-hand rule thumb towards north, wrap this way, we've got our current going like this. That's the whole solution there. That's how we figure out what direction our current's going. Now notice, as this thing turns, eventually we'll get to our vertical position. 
where we've got north, we've got south, and if our circuit is vertical, then remember the vertical position was a bit of a problem in our um, in our split ring commutators. So if I'm turning it this way, right now in this vertical position, if I have a north pole here, it could want to turn either direction. If I had a north pole here, well, it doesn't really want to turn at all. It wants to be attracted to the south pole there. So you can see that our vertical position actually isn't giving us anything at all. And that's where we're going to have zero current. And then as we get past that vertical position, as we get past that vertical position here, I'm just going to erase this guy. We're going to go a bit past. Now, now we have an answer. We know what, um, if we're still turning it in this direction, we know that we want to have a um, north pole like this. Because we're turning that north pole this way, it doesn't want to turn that way. It doesn't want to get any closer to the other north pole. And it's going to continue being the north pole like this, as it's in this position, well still it doesn't want to be north pole, it doesn't want to be getting closer to the other north pole, as it's in this position, all the way until it gets to the vertical position again. Okay, I'm going to leave a bit of that doodle down there, just so you can, um, so you can see how that will change. On the right here we have another couple pictures. This again just sort of states the ideas of Lenz's law, but I think the simplest way again is to just imagine what magnet these wires are producing. We get a magnet with a north pole pointing down like this. Okay, that's it. We get an alternating current like the picture down there. And you can see that our system here is a bit different from a split ring commutator because we're just connected directly to these loops and there's no gaps, there's no holes. So we're measuring constantly what current is coming out of that circuit. All right, that brings us to the second part of this lesson, the DC generator. Now, if you look at this picture, that should look even more like a split ring commutator. And that's what I'm going to say here. It is even more like a split ring commutator. You should be able to look at one of these pictures and tell me what direction the current is going. That's what you should be able to do from these problems. So let's take a look at this one here, and I'm just going to tell you that, let's say we're turning it this way. We're turning it counterclockwise. Okay. So that means that we're turning towards the North Pole. This part is going to be turning towards the North Pole. We want to slow that process down. So that's got to be our North Pole there. We use our right-hand rule. That means our current runs through this like that. That means if we follow to our um, split ring here, it goes through like this. And there's our current through the circuit. OK. Now, what we get from this split ring system is that instead of getting the alternation like we had above, here and here, we're breaking it. We're, sp we're swipping, uh, swapping the direction of the current again. So we get something that looks like this, and then it's going to be positive again, and positive again, and basically we get a bunch of positive bumps like this. That's our DC generator. So if I draw a, a picture of what this one is uh, achieving, we get something like this. If this is time, and this is current. Now obviously that's not perfect DC. In perfect DC, we want a straight line. And we can get closer and closer to that by having more and more and more splits in the ring so that different parts of our ring are touching the brushes at different, uh, different times. Sort of like our more advanced motors that we talked about in the last chapter. And by doing that, we can sort of keep our current as high as possible. And we get still a sort of a bumpy system, but something like this. And again, the more splits we put in there, the closer we can get to true DC. So this is if we have more splits in the ring. Okay, that's it for that lesson. A few questions there. I'll see you in the next lesson.